Hey everyone, it's Biggs. Got my beautiful daughter Paisley with me today. Paisley, what day is today? Isopod day! Oh, today's isopod day. Today. No isopod day! What day? No isopod day! New isopod day! So today's not like a normal day. Yesterday was Saturday and we did all the maintenance and everything on all the isopods. And they're in a temporary spot because we're getting the whole room made up for all... Everything's going to be all set up new for everybody. Everyone's going to even get new tubs. But today, Paisley told us, it's new isopod day. That's right. We have some new isopods we want to show you. We haven't even unboxed them yet. So let's get to it. Should we do it? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Now, if you're as fascinated as I am by the sheer incredible diversity of life that surrounds us in our wonderful and sometimes bizarre natural world, then you really belong here with me. I make videos on all facets of nature, reptiles, isopods, aquariums and vivariums, insects, arachnids, DIY projects, unique plants, and I try to dig a little bit deeper into the science behind it all. So if you like that kind of content, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well as ringing that notification bell, and you'll always be kept up to date when I upload new content. New isopods means new containers. So these are the new containers that I've mentioned before. They're going to be going into the rack. You know, I've already installed the vents, and uh, you can see in the vents, also I've also installed the mesh screen in behind on the vents. You can see it here, but here's a better picture of it. I did that because I was worried more about the Mankai being able to skate. But I like the idea that these ones have these little closable handles, lockable handles. And I've got some ventilation all along the top as well of the perimeter. I can't put it in the center of the lid because these all stack on top of each other. But that way the ventilation works really, really well for all of them. They're going to be going, I believe, five or six high in this new rack system. So there's the good ventilation for cross ventilation. This will be the front and that will be the back. These are good to go. Now I've got my substrate mix already made. My substrate mix is nice and organic and loamy. Organic compost to it. It's got some sea soil to it. It's got some cocoa fiber. It's got cypress mulch, sphagnum moss. I've even got a bunch of green moss and stuff I've put into it. Uh, it's got lots, I mentioned charcoal, I believe, already. It's got lots. It's got some orchid bark and some crushed up leaves. It's nice and organic. We've got some nice pieces of oak slab ready to go ready to fit and stuff. I also have some that have some mosses and some lichens on them. It's dead because I always sterilize all this stuff just to make sure I'm not introducing any par any uh, pathogens or potentially more and more concern is honestly is more isopods, uh, native isopods. And now we've also got lots of nice leaves. And I've even gone over into my tickle trunk of my different types of botanicals that I have for doing things like shrimps and stuff like that. These are sea grape leaves I brought back from Florida magnolia leaves. So we've got a nice variety. Let's get these tubs quickly set up for them. We start off, get some of that nice loamy organic substrate. I think starting off with a good quality substrate is integral to your success. Uh, we, I'm very much a fan of this new, this uh, newer product, Sea Soil. Uh, things like that, sea soil, worm castings, anything like that. It's a nice organic bed, but it also starts you off with uh, other things that are also a food source for them, as well as the mineral content. This is a uh, sphagnum moss that's already been moistened using straight reverse osmosis water. So give them a nice little bed on one side. It still has good ventilation. You guys all know why why the, the moisture is so critical for these animals. These animals are uh, are not bugs. These animals are crustaceans. So if this by chance your first isopod video you're seeing, these are not insects. These are animals that are truly more related to crayfish, lobster, shrimp. Get a bit more leaf litter in there. Now some of the pieces that I was talking about, here's some different types of bark pieces.
Now, I think Wally over at Supreme Gecko is probably the one that said it best. And he very is a strong advocate, and I have to 100% agree with him, is that you want to have your, your bark pieces within your enclosure, but you also want to ensure that you have kind of like a bridge. So the animals are going to be underneath the side of this piece of bark. They can transition from a drier area to a moister area without having to come out and move. So I think it's very critical that you have some of those pieces that do that transition period. So these look pretty good. We're going to add in a cuddle bone for each. Or a cuddle bone in a bit. Put one kind of on each side. I buy these in bulk. Okay, so they're nice and ready to go. We've added our leaves. I don't know if we really have to add a lot of other types of variety of leaves or not, but whatever. We love our isopods here, so we want to make sure they have variety. I like to get my containers ready before them, and then I get the like the containers to set up, mature a little bit, introduce some biological life in the form of springtails, and then they kind of mature a little bit for when the, the animals are here and ready to go. All right, guys, so we got the tubs ready to go. We got three new tubs ready, all ready with a substrate, and they're already set up. They got springtails, and they've matured a little bit, so we can make sure that we're ready, that the colony, the new cultures are going to be nice and established, so when they go in, then there's going to be less shock, less shock or stress. Paisley, where's the new isopods? I can't use the dog. How many isopods are in there? Three! In this giant box, there's only three isopods? Mm -hmm. Or three different types of isopods? Three different types. Three different types. And one of them's this big? No. That's why we need such a big box? That's bigger than you. I'm taller than it. You're taller than the box? I know, I'm longer than it. Yeah, longer than it? All right, well, let's get to it. Let's get to it! <laughs> you never know what we're going to have when we open one of these boxes. Well, this thing, we're not going to talk about that one. And this one, yeah, we're not going to talk about that one either. That's for later. What we are going to talk about today are the three new isopods that we've got. Now, one of them you can already see is an isopod that we've had before, and we just didn't do well with them. I know lots of people do well with this isopod, and that's this one here, which is Priscilio expansus. Lots of people culture it all over the world, and it just happens to be one of the, one of the two species that I have never done well with. And uh, we're going to try it again, and we're going to be setting it up entirely different than the way we've done it before. So that's one of them. Let's take a look, and we'll start there. All right, so the first isopod in question, and actually in truthful, all three species are Spanish isopods. Now, generally, most Spanish isopods are generally considered to, to wanting a drier environment. I was always under the impression that possibly I was keeping them too wet, and I was too heavy-handed heavy with the water, and that might have been the, the, the possibility for the downfall. However, I've seen many people keeping them exceedingly dry with great success, and I've seen people keeping them very, very wet with great success. And uh, my friends over at Species Canada, they are keeping theirs fairly wet. Same with the next species. So we're just basically going to land these beautiful Spanish isopods. Expansus is a truly stunning species. There are many more cultivars available now. I know of many people in Canada that are working with a brilliant orange form. Versus, and this one, you know, they look a little bit pale, but they might be a little bit stressed just because it's a new environment. There's one cruising around fairly well right there. Pretty excited to have Expanses back in my collection. Hopefully third time's the charm. Okay, the next species that we're ready to set up for, as I mentioned, is another Spanish species. This is another Priscilio. This one is relatively new to, to, to me. I've never kept this one before. It gets a fair size. It gets almost the same size as Hoffman Sagai or Magnificus, but it's a vastly different color than either of the other species. This one is fairly yellow in color. Now, these ones are just juveniles. Ivan and Cheyenne have just started producing these in large numbers, so they are juveniles, so... They're not going to be as sexy as the full-grown adults. But these ones, finally, Bolivari. Persilio Bolivari. 
So we got a nice mix of young boys and young girls. So we should do very, very well with these guys. And again, this is, you know, this one is another one that tends to break the rules. It seems to be a challenging species for a lot of people to start out with. And uh, I was under the impression that it needs to be dry, 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 bone dry. And uh, according to Cheyenne and Ivan, they're keeping it very, very wet. They're almost keeping it like a Kubara species in regards to the, to the moisture content. Now, I think the key is, is not necessarily the humidity level or moisture level within the substrate, but more importantly, that the animal has lots and lots of ventilation. I think ventilation is going to play a much more key role with a species such as this. Pretty excited to have Bacillio bolivari in our, in our collection. Now, when I land new isopods, I try to make it as, as absolutely transitional as possible with little disturbance whatsoever. So honestly, I just transported this piece of uh, egg carton and just put it over top of a moist area. And then once they've all left that and gone to other areas, and same with the moss, I've taken the moss, I've just turned it over uh, and taken the paper towel out. Other than that, I'm not doing anything else. Now we talked about the ventilation being critical, more, more important so possibly than the humidity. We're gonna find that out. That's all part of the fun part of the experimentation. If you saw my videos in the past couple of weeks that talked about, are we doing it wrong? There was a lot of different questions that were posed and a lot more experimentation needs to be done by people like ourselves. That's part of the fun. Now the last species is not a porcilio. It's in fact an armadillidium species. And we have this one large enclosure. This was the former Expansus one. It's from the original enclosures that has all the giant ventilation and stuff. I don't really know if it's all necessarily necessary for an armadillidium. They tend to be a lot more easier in regards to their care, a lot more forgiving. But we have that nice, you know, quarter of moist area. We've got lots of pieces of oak bark and the bridge in between. We've got that nice organic soil. Got some rotting wood and the leaf litter, everything's good to go for these guys as well. Now this one here is Armadillidium. Used to be sold in the trade as SP Marbleized. It is actually now described as Armadillidium Espanoli. And they look like marble, so it's a very, very fitting name. An extremely variable species they're almost like fingerprints. Not one looks like the other. Just like a natural piece of marble. I think they're wonderful. And I think they'll make a fascinating addition. Let's get them settled. Uh, I've lost my helper. Two days of isopods in a row. I guess that's enough. But she lost my helper for the day. But they're all settled in, as I say. Now, if you guys want to support the channel any further, consider becoming a member of the channel. There's many different tiers, many different perks and benefits. All that information can be found in the description below. So as always, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Take care.